Hello and welcome to Wayne Hills High School for today's Passaic County quarterfinal matchup between the Wayne Hills Patriots and the Wayne Valley Indians. I'm John Vitas here with Anthony Scadillo and Joe Rapp. Guys, let's get right to it. It's a big game, Passaic County quarterfinals. How do you mentally prepare for such a big matchup? Well, John, you've practiced day in and day out for this day. The seniors have been waiting a long time for this. And because you're playing your crosstown rivals, it's even a bigger game than normal. Well, John, simply, I would just prepare, maybe have a nice dinner, have a nice breakfast this morning, get a good night's sleep, and be prepared for this game. Now, guys, this is a rematch of a game earlier in the year in the Wayne tournament. The Wayne Hills and play Wayne Valley. Same pitching matchup, Travis Delavope against Pete Savistano. Wayne Hills won the game 10-1. It was an easy victory. They rock Savistano. Now, Wayne Hills is such a lethal lineup. We know that. One through nine, they can hit the baseball. Christian Avedizian's your nine hitter. You don't see that too often. I mean, every kid on this team can hit the ball. What does Savistano have to do to try to slow these bats down who just owned him the first time he played them? Well, John, he really needs to attack the strike zone. And as long as you do that and your fielders make plays, you're going to be fine. But, you know, Hills did have a great game against them last time, so I would be a little worried if I was him, knowing that, you know, I pitched against these guys last time and attacked the strike zone, and they knocked me around. Well, I have to agree with Anthony. You have to attack the strike zone, but mostly hit the corners, maybe change speeds a little bit, get them off balance, and maybe they'll hit it at someone if they get one. Yeah, I think location's going to be key for Savistano because if he leaves the ball up and in the middle of the zone, Wayne Hill's going to drive the ball. They have great power. So... Travis Delavope owned this team last time in the matchup. He only gave up one run. Wayne Hills, like I said, got the easy win. How does he not overlook these Valley hitters? I mean, he probably feels like he can just mow them down one, two, three. If he starts to get in trouble, what does he have to do to pitch, pitch around them, and how does he approach these hitters? Look, Travis just needs to be Travis. He knows he's the ace of the staff, and he's got dirty stuff. All he needs to do is attack the strike zone like he normally does, and he'll be fine. I have to agree with Anthony once again. Travis has been great all season. He's got six complete complete games this year. Just got to throw strikes and get him out. All right, now X factors for the game. Obviously, we're going to talk about the starting pitchers, and they're going to have a big impact on the game. But in the starting lineup, who's going to have an impact that we might not have seen coming into the game? Well, my X factor is Brian Dowling, the second baseman, who is also a sophomore. You know, he's going to be the leadoff batter today, and if he could start the game off with a bang, get on base, and, you know, maybe steal a few bases here and there, he's got some speed, you know, that could really get off on a good start. I have to go with the junior first baseman, Kevin Solomon. He leads in the NBIL and RBIs with 30. He's been playing great all season. I think he'll drive him some runs today and lead those to a victory. Yeah, those are great both great picks. I think Dowling's going to set the table well, starting things off. I'm going to go with the third baseman, Christian Avedizi, and he's been batting nine, but I think he's going to step up. He hit a home run against Valley the first time they played, so I'd expect him to do that again. Well, maybe not hit a home run, but I expect him to have a nice game. So that's it for our pregame show. We'll be back with the first pitch of action after this. Hello and welcome back to Wayne Hills High School. Once again, I'm John Vitas here with Anthony Scadillo and Joe Rapp. So guys, we got a little time before the game gets underway. Teams, as Wayne Hills takes the field to begin Passaic County quarterfinal, Travis Delavope, the ace on the hill. Guys, we didn't mention this in the pregame show. Real quick, let's get a prediction. What do you think the final score is going to be? How do you think things are going to turn out? Well, John, I mean, you know that Travis is going to throw a good game. I mean, he's been really consistent all year long. It's just if the... They hit the ball as well as they have thus far, and if they field the ball as well as they have thus far, they're going to get the W, no doubt. Well, John, I think they're going to have to scratch for runs here in this particular game. I think it's going to be a pitcher's duel. I see the game maybe going 4-2 with Wayne Hills getting the W. Travis still hope is going to have a great game. I don't think Pete Savistano is going to pitch that bad. I mean, he'll give up a few runs, but I think he'll do well. Now that you see the ace of the staff, Travis Delavope, taking his warm-up tosses as we get ready to start here in the top of the first. A nice crowd here at Wayne Hills for this big game. Now let's go over Travis's great stats for the season. He's got 44 and two-thirds innings pitched, a 3.29 ERA, averages 9.4 strikeouts per game, so he's definitely a strikeout pitcher. He'll get his fair share of Ks today. And real, real quick, let's run through the Valley starting batting order. Zach Rosen, the junior, will lead it off playing left field. Casey Abel, the sh sophomore shortstop, bats second. Ryan Durr will bat third, playing right field. He's a senior. Matt Karch, the senior, will play third. John Dubnoff plays first. He's also a senior. Pete Savistano, Tim Ronco will DH for Anthony Varelli. Marcus Virgilito playing second. And the senior catcher, Luke Rigoloso, bats ninth. So we're just about to get underway here from Wayne Hills High School. Zach Rosen gets into the batter's box. Wayne Hill's all ready to go. So guys, you excited? Let's do it, John. John, I, I'm extremely interested 
in what Travis is going to start off with. I mean, he has some good off-speed stuff. He has a, a nice curveball, a nice changeup, and a, also a slider that really dives into a right-handed batter's arms. I'm extremely interested in seeing what he's going to do to Zach Rose, an, ex an explosive leadoff hitter. Yeah, Anthony and I have both caught Travis, and he's a phenomenal pitcher. First pitch is a strike on the outside corner. A good star for Della Volpe. 0-1 on the leadoff hitter, Rosen. Well, John, I can just feel the intensity at this field right now. Wayne Valley, Wayne Hills is great. Next pitch is low. Back-to-back -back fastballs to open it up for Travis. The crowd is alive so far here early in the morning. It's 11 a.m., early start time, but the parents are here. The JV players are here. Everyone's here to watch this game. Here's the 1-1 pitch from Della Volpe. Another fastball driven high, right center field. This is Zangrilli and Belias coming over, and Belias will make the catch in right field for the first out. So right off the bat, Rosen makes contact off Della Volpe's fastball. Three straight fastballs to open it up, but he flies out to Belias, one out in the top of the first. And John, you know Travis does not have the most overpowering stuff, but his fastballs and changeups just dive into a left-handed batter. His two-seam fastball just goes straight into the left-handed batter's box, which is incredible. Uh, it's very tough against left-handed hitters being a lefty. And a strike on the outside corner to sophomore Casey Abel. Abel made a splash early in the season this year. Had a big game against DePaul early on. Two home runs, a double, a bunch of RBIs. Seven RBIs. Seven RBIs. That's the first off-speed pitch of the night for Travis, or afternoon, I should say. So Abel in a hole now 0-2. Great pitch from Della Volpe. I don't think Abel was expecting that. I'd like to see the deuce here, John. Drop the hammer a little no, bit. High fastball. Diderno sets up outside. Travis hits the spot, but it's off the plate. The fans are always going to want that call, but when Diderno sets up in the lefty's batter's box, he's not going to get that call. John, that's a great 0-2 pitch. Low fastball out of the strike zone. Make him chase for it. Don't need to throw a strike with 0-2. Curveball from Della Volpe. He's fouled off by Abel. He left that one up in the zone. Got away with one there. I like the way Casey Abel's battling this at bat. He's down 0-2 and he fights off a tough pitch and stays in the at bat. So Travis starting to go to his breaking pitches now in the second at bat. One out, nobody on for the Indians. And fastball up and away for ball two. Good waste pitch from Della Volpe trying to work the count. Curveball fouled up into the screen by Abel. So he's really working the count here. Still two and two. I don't know if you guys noticed, but the Valley JV team, I believe, has thunder sticks over there. You can see them in the background of your picture there. Well, John, I don't care. I don't care about the Valley JV team. We got Lenny Diderno here. All right? He's the loudest of them all, so I think we got the upper hand. Absolutely. Adela Volpe misses high. Full count now. Looked like a change up there, John. Yeah. Just a little upstairs. He left it up. Adrenaline's definitely pumping through Travis, so he's going to have to find his control a little bit. I just worked the count to three and two. The payoff pitch. Ground ball up the middle. Uh, that could be trouble. Dowling over to his right. Makes the play. Throw in the dirt. Can't be handled by Kevin Solomon. Diderno there to back up. But an error to start things off for the sophomore, Brian Dowling. Solomon couldn't handle the low throw. And the Valley has a runner on with one out. John Dowling took over midway through the season for Rich Matrude, who was having a tough time. Uh, a few errors on the year. That's only Dowling's second error thus far. You know, not a timely time for an error, but with one out and a guy on first, you know, Travis just had to battle, try to get a, a double play. The ground ball would help. You see Abel taking his lead there, number 16. Della Volpe now working for the stretch for the first time this afternoon. First pitch is a strike on the outside corner to right fielder senior Ryan Durr. Durr batting third for the Indians today. John, what we went over in the pregame, Travis has to throw strikes and he's been doing that for the first three hitters, so. Nice lefty pickoff move there, Abel back easily. But you're going to have to keep it close with the lefty on the hill. Travis has a great move. He picks guys off all the time. It's going to be really tough for Valley to get this running game going because Ryan Diderno, the catcher, just has an absolute gun. So it's going to be very difficult for Valley to get any stolen bases as Travis's fastball is on the outside corner. So he gets ahead of Duro in two after he did the same to Abel, but Abel was able to work out. A 3-2 count. We'll see how Travis handles Durr here. You'd expect at least one waste pitch. John, the low outside fastball to a right-handed hitter that has some heat on is an extremely hard pitch to hit. Yeah. 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 
And they appeal to the first base up, and he says that Ryan Durr went around strike three. Pitch on the outside corner, Durr couldn't hold up. Well, I, I had to say, I think Wayne Hill's got a break there. I don't think Ryan Durr s s swang at a swing at all. I mean, it, it was a good pitch by Travis, don't get me wrong, but I don't think that was a swing. Yeah, I, I would tend to disagree with the call there. I mean, it didn't really look like Durr went around, but it was a good pitch by Travis, good location. Another pickoff attempt at Abel, it gets back easily once again. Travis has had good stuff this far. Uh, he's mixing it up, change up, curveballs, fastballs, exactly what he needs to do. Yeah! Fastball blows it right past Matt Karch, the senior third baseman for the Indians. All righties to start it off for Wayne Valley. Abel leads off first, Solomon holding him on with two outs. And it's a comeback or right to Travis who snags it for the third out. Good reaction by Travis Delavolpe and Wayne Hills gets out of the first inning unscathed. That's a great play by Travis Delavolpe. That that's probably a hit up the middle. So in case in case he probably goes to third on the play. So that's a big that might be a big play in the game really. Yeah, nice snag there. That's what those PFPs are for. Pitch and fielder practice. It's important, John. Absolutely, we work on that all the time. The three of us here are all JV players. We practice with these kids, so. We, we know how, what their games are like, so hopefully that'll help out our viewers. We'll get some good insight here. But that was a great play by Travis to keep Wayne Hills out of a, what would have been a troubling inning if that ball had gotten through. As uh, you see Pete Savistano taking his warm-up tosses. So we're going to take a look at the starting lineups here in a second. There's your starting lineup for the Wayne Hills Patriots. Leading things off, the sophomore Brian Dowling. He'll get an early chance to avenge his error that he made which Travis got him off the hook for. Senior shortstop Eric Delavolpe bats second. Very Looks very similar to his brother Travis who bats third, the senior pitcher. Eric's a righty, Travis is a lefty, so that's how you can tell them apart. Jordan Kessel with DH batting fourth for the left fielder Sam Virgil. Kevin Solomon bats fifth playing first base. Mike Zangrilli, the third junior, will play center field. Alex Belias in right field, we saw him make a catch in the top of the first, bats seventh. Ryan Dederno behind the plate, batting eighth. And Christian Ivedizi in the senior third baseman will hit ninth. John, as we look at Pete Savistano on the hill, I've caught him previously in my catching career, and you know, he's got some good stuff. He's got a, a nice change up that drops down, uh, a curveball that really 12 to six, you know, drops straight down. Uh, his fastball's got some nice heat on it, and it has a lot of movement right into a right-handed batter, so it should be interesting what he goes after. Uh, we can take a look here at the Valley defensive starting lineup. Uh, Zach Rosen, the junior, led things off for them in the top of the first, starting over Mark Troutman, the senior. Anthony Verrilli will be in center field. He's a sophomore, but he's being DH'd for in this game, so he won't be at the plate, but he'll be playing center. The senior, Ryan Durr, is in right field. Matt Karch, the senior third baseman. Casey Abel will be at short, just a sophomore. At second is Marcus Virgilito, the junior. Senior John Dubnoff is at first. And Luke Rigoloso is the seniors behind the plate for the starting pitcher, Pete Savistano, who is a junior. Tim Ronco will be DHing for Anthony Verrilli once he gets up in the bottom of the second, or top of the second, excuse me. So we're underway. Savistano's first pitch is on the way. Strike swing and a miss by Brian Dowling on a fastball. Blew that fastball past Dowling, 0-1 on Brian to start things off. Brian, two days ago, hit, hit his first career home run as a Patriot, so I'm sure he's feeling I'm sure he's feeling good, taking a nice aggressive approach at the plate, swinging at the first pitch. The 0-1 pitch on the way, strike on the outside corner, nice pitch from Savas Daniel, keeping the ball low. 0-2 on Dowling, now Dowling's home run was at Pascal Kells, he hit it opposite field. Hopefully we'll see much more of that from him, but Coach Ainello rewarding him, putting him in the one slot for this game. So, big honor for a sophomore to be batting leadoff in such a big county game. The 0-2 from Savistano is high, good waste pitch from him. One and two now on Dowling. John, I, I see him, you know, dropping the hammer here, throwing a curveball in the dirt, trying to get Dowling to chase. It'll be interesting to see if Savistano's on to start things off. The one, two. Fastball blows it past Dowling. High fastball, Dowling chased. So one out right away for Valley. A nice start for Pete Savistano. Well, that was a, that was a great one-two pitch by Savistano. Nice high fastball, put it at his eyes. So it, it was a believable pitch, and Brian swung at it. Absolutely nice way to start things off for Wayne Valley. Savistano really popping that fastball in there here early. As now Eric Delavope steps to the plate. Senior shortstop, twin brother Travis, starting pitcher today. 
The first pitch from Savistano, another high fastball. Called a ball by the home plate umpire. So Eric Delavopi ahead in the count to start things off. The 1-0 from Savistano. Another fastball for a strike this time. Same pitch, same 0-1 pitch he threw to Dowling, low fastball. So he's locating well to start things off. You know, Eric does have a good eye at bat. I mean, there's 13 walks on the year. That's a, that's a good amount. You know, he's going to hit the ball. You know it. The 1-1 fastball outside. 2-1 and one on Eric now. So all fastballs to Eric Delavolpe to start things off. Yeah, Savistano has not shown any breaking stuff early in the game, so his mentality is just to throw strikes, hit some corners, and maybe get them to chase like he did to Brian Dallin. The 2-1, there's an off-speed pitch. Curveball high. Savistano misses, so now Eric Delavolpe has the 3-1 advantage now. So he'll look to drive something, anything that's a borderline strike, he probably won't swing. John, as a pitcher, you hate guys who, you know, look at a lot of balls that are close in the strike zone that don't get called because that just really aggravates you. Your pitch count goes up and then, you know, arm soreness, you know, gradually works in and it's really aggravating. So another high fastball from Savistano. So Eric Delavope works out a walk. And now stepping to the plate will be the three hitter for the Patriots, Travis Delavope, your starting pitcher. Travis batting 402 on the year, a 707 slugging percentage, five home runs, 28 RBI. So he's been hitting great as well as his phenomenal pitching. You see Eric with the lead over there. They try to pick him off right away. Nothing doing over there. Jarek will try to drive in his brother, Eric, with one out and a runner on first here in the bottom of inning number one. One thing about Wayne Hill is as soon as you get a base runner on, you, they, we are willing to steal immediately, get guys over. You know, aggressive base running leads to runs. First pitch to Travis, he rips foul just wide of the first baseline. So he's a no-one pull to start things off. Savistano gets his sign. Eric with an aggressive lead over there. Savistano sees it and he'll check him up again. When you see a guy getting a big lead like that, you definitely want to keep him close. If you really don't know how Luke Rigoloso's arm is, we should see at some point. You'd expect Wayne Hills to test him. There's Travis wearing number 20. Savistano in the set. Another big lead from Eric. This time he goes home. And it's a fastball on the outside corner. So Travis Delavolpe now in an 0-2 hole. I have to say, watching Travis the whole season at the varsity level, he does he does work the count in his favor a lot, and sometimes to his detriment. And when he's down 0-2, he's got to protect with anything close. Savistano checks on Eric again, who's had a huge lead over there. He sh Savistano sh uh, showed a nice slide step on that last pitch going home to Travis. He should pr he'll probably do that again, you'd expect. Eric with a huge lead now. And he's going on the pitch, Travis steals. Uh, Eric steals, excuse me, Travis fouls one back to the screen, so Tra Eric will have to go back to first. John, I don't think that was a hit and run. I think the coach just gave him a steal sign and Travis had to protect with two strikes, so. Yeah, absolutely Viewers not. at home, that was not a hit and run. Yeah. You, would, you wouldn't hit and run with an 0-2 count. Batter's got to protect. You just got to do whatever he can to get the ball in play. Interesting call to steal 0-2 there. We'll see if it pays off if, we ch if he'll try to do it again. Eric with another big lead off first. And they're going to try to pick him off again, makes it back easily. That's the third or fourth pickoff we've seen in this at bat. Well, Savistano's move really is not that great. You see, he takes a long time, long arm. You know, when you know that someone doesn't have a, a good pickoff move, you can take as much as a lead as you want. And absolutely, Wayne Hills knows that because they faced him before in this season. So they know he that he doesn't have that great of a move as the curveball misses low. Good eye by Della Volpe. That was a close pitch but the ump ruled it low, so one and two now. Well, Anthony, I don't think that's his number one pickup move. I really don't think so. I think he's just trying to keep him close, closer to things. I don't think he's doing a very good job of it, but. He's got a lot of space in between him and the bag right now. It's a grounder off the pitcher's glove. Savistano will have to go to first. He makes the play in time to get Travis Delavolpe, but Eric Delavolpe moves over to second. So now Wayne Hills has a runner in scoring position with two outs for the cleanup hitter, D.H. Jordan Kessel. 
I have to say, Travis hit that ball really hard. Kind of compa can compare it to the one that he caught in the top of the first inning. Just it was on the ground, and Seth Sano got a glove on it. On the mound, that is an extremely intimidating ball to see coming right back at you and just sticking your glove out for, for dear life. First pitch to Kessel, misses low and away. 1-0 and on him. Eric leads off second. You'd expect any base hit by Kessel to score a run here as the runner will be moving on contact with two outs. Savistano from the set. Not holding Eric on too closely. The pitch, same pitch, this, but this time they're going to call it a strike on the outside corner. Looked like the same pitch to me as you see Eric on second base. Wayne Valley holds him on at first, but then they'll back off as the pitch comes to home plate. In fact, they're backing off already. 1-1 one, one count on Kessel. Pitch is a curveball low, 2-1. and one. Just missed off the outside corner there. Kessel batting 316 on the year with a homer and 21 RBIs. Bats clean up in just about every game. Hasn't gotten too much action at catcher. He'll probably be the starter next year. And Kessel drives this one center field, really coming in. And he's under it and makes the catch to end the inning. So that'll do it for the Patriots. They got a runner into scoring position, which was Eric Delavopi, who reached on a walk. But they're not able to drive him in as Delavopi and Kessel both make it out. Wayne Hills will take the field for the top of the second. So guys, thoughts on the first inning? Both pitchers look sharp to start things off. What did you, what did you see in that first oh, inning? Well, I saw both pitchers throwing strikes early early in the count. I mean, they're getting 0-2. They're going 0-2. They're just pitching great. Yeah, John, I mean, right now it looks like it's going to be a pitcher's duel. And until somebody starts hitting the ball consistently, it's, it's going to stay that way. All right, well, guys, obviously the football season will be starting in a few months, as you see. The big game this year, new league, so we won't be playing the same teams that we normally play. But Wayne Hills takes on St. Joe's at Wayne Hills High School Friday, October 2nd at 7, at 7 o'clock, as you see there. Should be a great game. Mike Quinn, the quarterback, is coming back for the Patriots. They do return a good amount of starters. They, of course, they're going to lose some seniors. But, Anthony, me and you will probably be announcing some football games this year. What are your thoughts on their well, season? Well, I'd like to see who's going to step up at wide receiver. I mean... They do have a few guys, but no real guys like the Brian Ogdens and the Justin Horhands like we've had in the past. I mean, we're going to have some juniors playing like Mike Drees, maybe Joe Ramadan, Eugene Lowe, and, you know, some seniors stepping up. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, it will be interesting to see how the sophomores step in, the juniors too, and if they can step up and fill big roles that the seniors left behind, I think that'll be huge for them. So Travis Delavopi toes the rubber to start off the second inning. No score between Wayne Hills and Wayne Valley in the quarterfinals of the Passaic County Tournament. Travis's first pitch is going to be a bunt down the third base line. It'll go foul. Nice try there by number 24, the first baseman, John Dubnoff, who's a senior. Delavopi threw just 15 pitches in the first inning, was able to get through it with unscathed despite a Brian Dowling error. The 0-1 from Delavolpe. Fastball on the inside corner, 0-2. So Delavolpe has been able to get ahead on these Valley hitters and really put them in a bad position. As now they got to protect with two strikes, probably won't drive the ball too far. The one thing that Travis has going for him all the time is pinpoint accuracy. I mean, catching him is like reading sweet, sweet poetry. It's, it's just so incredible. Yeah, Travis really does locate well. You saw there the curveball fouled off by Dubnoff. He really does hit his spots well. I mean, he's got a very electric fastball. He gets probably gets it into the low to mid-80s at least. Nasty off-speed pitches. Fastball blows it right past Dubnoff. One out here in the second. Nice pitch from Della Volpe well, to Anthony, start things off here in the second. Anthony, that's the pure poetry you were talking about right there. Pitch on the outside corner, had no chance of hitting it in Dubnoff. Pinpoint accuracy, Joe. That's what it's all about in baseball. If you can hit the spot and throw some heat, you're going places. And when you're thinking curveball and a one-two count like that and a fastball just blows right past you on the outside corner, it's almost unhittable. As Travis Delavopi's first pitch to his opposing pitcher, Pete Savistano, is fouled off. Delavopi got ahead on Savistano there, and he wasn't able to put it in fair territory. Fouled off down the first base side. 
It's just a little fun fact about Trav is he's thinking about going to Montclair for baseball. He threw he threw some pitches in front of the coach of Montclair. So maybe I think he I think he's gonna go towards Montclair to play some baseball. Hey, Which, if you get a scholarship, Joe, you know, you're taking it. Yeah, you're gonna go wherever the scholarship takes you. The one one on the outside corner to Savistano. Beautiful pitch by Della Volpe, painting the outside corner. One and two now on Savistano. See what he throws. Maybe some off speed here, John. And a called strike three on the outside corner. I think Savas Daniel thought that pitch was up. Travis definitely missed the spot but got away with it. So back to back strikeouts to open up the second for Della Volpe. Two outs, nobody on. Well, Anthony, I don't know if that was necessarily a breaking ball. It, it looked kind of like maybe a, maybe a, a cutter in a way. Looked like a maybe a changeup or something like that, Joe. No, I don't think it was a changeup. Went towards the left-handed batter box a little bit. Yeah, I, I was going to only broke a little. There. Fastball blows it right past Tim Ronka, the senior, who's DHing for the center fielder Anthony Verrilli. So Travis just blowing away these hitters to start th start things off. He's got three strikeouts already, and Gronka can't catch up to it again. So he fouls it back to the screen. 0-2 oh now. Travis is getting ahead of every single one of these hitters. Yeah, you know, John, we've seen Travis throw before, and I've never seen this much velocity out of him. I mean, he's normally been, you know, a finesse guy that's going to throw the curveball in the dirt, get you to chase it because it's got a lot of break. Today, he looks like he's throwing the heat. Yeah, he's really pumping that fastball in there. It's a big game. you got to think the adrenaline's helping him out a little bit as he misses outside with the... Look, will look like a changeup, one and two. Well, not only he's throwing hard, he's hitting corners too, so he's basically unhittable. Yeah, he definitely relies on location to get guys out, and when his location and velocity is on, he's almost unhittable. This Rock is able to stay alive, fouls one back. Still one and two now on him. He's trying to push up Travis's pitch count, maybe knock him out late in the game. It's a good strategy. Anthony, you think uh, Valley should be looking to work the count, maybe try to knock Del Volpe out in late in the game? You know, that might be one of the best ideas I've heard in a long time because Travis just completely destroyed them. That is a nice shot there, down the line. Burch all running, he's not gonna get there. It's fair ball, he's gonna go in for two. That's a stand-up double for Tim Ronco with two outs. He cranked that ball down the left field line. That might be gone in some parts. But Wayne Hill's a pitcher's park. Keeps that ball in play, Burch told to track it down. Oh, they're calling that a foul ball, John. Oh, they're gonna change the call as Ronco was standing on second base. That's a crushing blow for Wayne Valley. I'm gonna guess that the the base umpire was overruled or someone was overruled on that. Well, the, the home plate umpire would have a perfect view on that right down the left field line. You know, it looked like he had a lot of hook on that. It looked like that might have been an off-speed pitch that just kind of hung up there for a little too long. The home plate umpire does have that call for viewers at home that don't know. Travis working from the windup now. Thought he would have, was going to have to go from the stretch with the runner on second, but they overruled the foul ball, the one-two. Strikes out Ronka, fastball on the outside corner. That is unhittable. So Travis strikes out the side, one-two-three in the second. Wayne Hill is to bat in the bottom of the second. So Anthony, we were talking about football just a moment ago. Obviously St. Joe's is going to be the big game on the schedule this year. Both Wayne Hills and St. Joe's ranked two and three last year in football. You'd expect them to return. A lot of great players. So, talking about this, this upcoming football season, they open up against West Essex. I mean, other uh, as you see there, they'll, they'll play West Essex 7:30 Friday, September 11th at West Essex. So, besides St. Joe's, do you really see anyone trying to uh, trip and Wayne Hills up? I mean, they play Valley, they play a bunch of teams that are good. Well, Wayne Hills in the NBIL previous to this upcoming season has played some of the best sports team in the state. All around, all sports, with basketball, baseball, football. The competition in this new league is not going to be the same as that league. I see Wayne Hills destroying almost every team they play this year. Only one challenge is St. Joe's. I mean, when you have two returning players in Chris Fonte and Mike Quinn, who are both going to get D1 scholarships, other than if they get an injury, you, you can't beat them. I mean... They are too explosive. I mean, Brian Dowling last year, who came in as a sophomore replacement for Ronnie Dries, had almost 1,000 yards. Just incredible. Yeah, Wayne Hills is going to need guys like Brian Dowling to step it up this year. 
Of course, with Ronnie Dries graduating, he's not going to be there. Of course, Brian Ogden will be graduating. You mentioned the wide receiver question marks. But Mike Quinn's going to be there, so you expect him to have a great year as usual. As we get ready to start the bottom of the second, Kevin Solomon lead things off, leads things off for the Patriots, who weren't able to push across a run in the first. Solomon, your five hitter, playing first base. Rips the first pitch up the middle. Virgilito to his right, can't handle it. And that'll be an infield single for Kevin Solomon. Marcus Virgilito tried to make a nice backhand play but couldn't come up with the ball. Infield single for Solomon. Well, John, that's my X factor right there. One for one. Tough play for Virgilito. It won't be an error to him, I don't think. We'll give Solomon a single there to start things off on the first pitch of the inning. Up so coming. right away, Wayne Hill's threatening. Runner on first, nobody out for Mike Zangrilli, the center fielder. He's got some power, John. He, he can really crush the ball. Quick hands, he's got a lot of upper body strength. Yeah, definitely. Zangrilli has a ton of power. Two home runs on the year. Batting 333, 23 RBIs. Zangrilli definitely a threat at the plate. I have to say, Zangrilli is probably one of the hardest workers on the Wayne Hills Pages team. I see him at the gym all the time, lifting big, running, he just does it all, and that's why He's playing left field. You can say that for a lot of players on this team. They really do work hard. We work we work hard in the weight room all year during football season, basketball season. No one sees it, but three times a week we're all in there working out. First pitch is a fastball, swing and a miss by Zangrilli. Savistano really throwing hard to start things off. He's been blowing balls past people all night. Solomon's got a big lead over there first. Yep, just like Eric, we saw that. In the first inning, Savastano's gonna make a move over there, but he's just too slow, and the Wayne Hills uh, runners are getting back easily. Savastano wants a double play ball here that would really help him out. Absolutely, but Zangrilli, a pretty fast runner, so it will be pretty tough to turn two. Savastano steps off, so the runners are definitely getting into his head. He's either gonna have to develop a better move or just try to forget them because. They're taking huge leads, and they're going to be running on him if Rigoloso can't throw him out. He's been really worried about people getting on base thus far. And Solomon takes off. Curveball high. Good pitch to throw on. The throw is high, and Solomon gets in there safe. Virgilito tried to get the tag in there as quick as possible, but couldn't do it. The throw was ticketed for center field. A good job by him to knock that down. But Solomon with the stolen base. So now Wayne Hills with a runner on second and nobody out. Great opportunity to push a run across. Well, Zank really has got to do a job here. He got to get, he's got to get Solomon over to third with less than two outs. If he does that, he'll get greeted in the dugout greatly. Fastball misses high. Two and one now on Zank really. Fly ball to right field would help here. Move Solly over. Savastano is throwing the heat, though. It's hard to get around this ball. Yeah, he definitely is. All Zangrilli has to do is go opposite field. A grounder will get the job done. I mean, all he's doing here is looking to move Solomon over to third. I mean, a hit would be great, but if you can get a runner on third with one out, all you need is a fly ball or a ground ball, and you have yourself the early one nothing lead. Zangrilli ready to go. Two and two on him. The Last thing he wants is a strikeout. That's what Savistano's looking for right here. The 2-2 off-speed pitch, and he gets that strikeout. Zangrilli goes down swinging for the first out of the inning, and that's exactly what Savistano was looking for. A quick strikeout for him, and there's right away there's one out so with Frere. Number 31, the right fielder, Alex Belias. Batting 425 in the year, Johnny's an explosive hitter. He has a, a few triples, a lot of doubles. He's, he's a really strong guy, another guy with huge upper body strength. I mean, just a powerful kid. 613 slugging percentage. That's unbelievable for high school baseball. A ton of extra base hits for him. As Solomon takes off for third, the throw to third is in time, and they call him out. Solomon thought he got under the tag. He's irate. Wayne Valley's fans going nuts. So Luke Rigoloso throws out Kevin Solomon at third base. A big play in the inning to erase Wayne Hills' only chance to score. John, I have to say, on, he got in there. Just because the throw beat in the umpire called him out, it happens all the time. He did get under the tag. That's a bad call missed, by the umpire. Missed the tag completely. We had a perfect view from where we are. As Belias hits one into right field for a base hit, that would have been Wayne Hills' run. But instead, it's just a two-out single for Alex Belias. 
So Wayne Hills will try to get another rally going here with two outs for Ryan Diderno. The catcher will come up to bat now. But like you said, I'd have to agree with you guys. I think Solomon definitely got under that tag. I mean, it was a good throw. The throw did beat him there, but the tag was a little slow by Karch, the third baseman. So that's a big call early on. So Belias with another aggressive lead, trying to deke out Savistano, as you can see. First pitch to Diderno, grounded to third base. Karch is there, throws across the diamond to Dubnoff in plenty of time to get Ryan Diderno to end the second inning. So through two, we are scoreless here at Wayne Hills High School. So guys, thoughts on that little rally there, and the call at third base? Oh, we got snubbed there, John. I mean, that's, that's a run that should be on the board right now. But, you know, Travis is going to fight. You know he's going to fight. One of the best pitchers in the league right now. You know, he's going to duel. You know it. There's no question about that. Travis is going to throw a good game. I mean, whether he gives up no runs, one run, or two runs, that's really the question. He's not going to give up more than two or three runs in this game. I mean, he's just such a great pitcher. See Travis taking his warm-up pitches here in the third. And now we're going to welcome into our broadcast the superstar sophomore for the Wayne Hills Lady Patriots softball team, Erica Wills. Now, Erica, last night you guys had the huge win against West Milford, the one seed in the Passaic County Tournament. Talk about that game, the emotions going through your head as you pulled off the major upset. Um, well, in the beginning we were like really pumped up. The pregame warm-up was intense. But then um, once we got into the game, the first inning, I was a little nervous. Well, not nervous but the adrenaline was kind of rushing and I walked the first girl and that, I've never done that before. So it was a little scary, but after that we kind of settled down and we played our game. Yeah, you guys definitely settled down. Me and Joe were at the game. It was a great game, you guys won 3-1, you pitched a great game. You know your numbers were strikeouts, hits, you know what you had? Uh, I think nine strikeouts, four hits, I'm not sure though. Wow, that's, that's pretty good, Erica. <laughs> Thank you, Joe Ralph. <laughs> well, Erica, I have a question. What is your mentality going into a big game like that against the number one seed, West Milford? Um, well, I knew they had a really good hitter in Sarah Zabelli, their third hitter, so I was trying to pitch around her, but that was really the only girl I was afraid of, so I did okay. Yeah, as a sophomore, how do you handle all that pressure? I mean, you're in such a big game, like I said, just a sophomore. You're the ace for the team. You really have to step up because you know you guys aren't going to score too many runs off a great West Milford pitcher. I mean, how um, do you handle all that? Well, I took it inning by inning because I knew I just, if I, as long as I got the leadoff batter out each time, we'd be okay, but um, it was a little crazy. My heart rate was really high that whole game. <laughs> yeah, it was a great game as Marcus Virgilito takes a strike. One and one now on him. Now, Erica, the uh, semifinals were last night. You have to go right back on w with no rest and pitching tonight against uh, Pompton Lakes in the championship as Virgilito hits a fly ball to shallow left. Della Volpe going out and makes the catch down the line. Nice play by Eric Della Volpe for the first out of the inning, so Virgilito's retired. So like I was saying, Erica, you got to go up with no rest against Pompton Lakes tonight. What do you know about them, and how are you going to attack those hitters? Um, well, we've been playing like five games a week anyway, so the rest isn't a problem. But I know their leadoff hitter is very, very good, and she usually gets intentionally walked. But I think we're going to go after her because no one will be on, so the worst she can do is hit a solo home run. But um, we're going to pitch away, up and in, away from her, so we should be okay. Erica, how does your room feel? Is it, is it all right? You all right to pitch tonight? Oh, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, because you got, you, Erica, you pitch just about every inning. As you see, Luke Rigoloso wraps a single into left field, so they got to run around with one out. But, I mean, you pitch every inning of every game, so do you feel any of that fatigue? I mean, um, no, I did some, a lot of conditioning in the off season, so I'm pretty strong, so I feel good. Yeah, we definitely know Erica works hard in the off season, working out with Hertzberg's boyfriend, right? <laughs> yep. So, yeah, she's definitely in shape for this, these back-to-back -back outings. Every every time she goes out, she's going to throw a complete game. We pretty much know that. Yeah. So now Zach Rose in the top of the order for Valley. They're starting a little bit of a threat here. Runner on first, one out. Delavope's first pitch grounder foul down the third baseline. Now, you guys have a lot of young players on your varsity team. I mean, you have Sarah Saunders, a freshman in center. Jamie Pospisil is a freshman catcher. You have three sophomores in your starting lineup. I mean, you do lose Holly Basnick, who's a great hitter, and, of course, Heather Higgins, a senior. But how do you think you're going to do in the future? I mean, there's no reason you guys can't do any better, right? Oh, no, we're, um, we're pretty solid. We have some good freshmen that will come up and play. But um, we've really come together as a team this year, so I think next year, even with the seniors leaving, um, also Erica Dent, who's been a big part of the team, um, I think we'll be okay. 
Erica, you guys struggled a lot last season. How has been the how has been the improvement from last season to this season been? Um, definitely the team um, camaraderie. We all get along. We're really good friends. Like the whole softball team's here today, and we're sitting together talking about the game, laughing. And last year it was a little bit more tense and stuff. So definitely we worked hard this whole season because we knew we didn't want to have the same season as last year. And how much of that do you credit to Kurt, Coach Hertzberg? I mean, because this is just her second year coaching. She's really turned the program around. I mean, I don't think you guys made it to states in something like 20 years. Oh, yeah, she's been great. Um, she always says to, like, give all you got and just work hard every at-bat. Like, when we practice, if we take 200 swings, she said everyone has to be hard because, you know, when you get into the game, you don't want to be the one that strikes out or something like that. So she has a lot to do with how we're doing. So they're going to call... Rigoloso safe at first. Diderno showing off his arm there. Almost threw him out. So it's one and two on Rosen. Runner on first, one out. Just to keep him informed on the game. So Eric, a big game tonight against Pompton Lakes, like we said. Do you you felt the pressure last night? You think you'll feel it again tonight? Um, probably <laughs> because it's the finals. But after doing it, after playing under the lights last night, I think we'll be uh, a little better. Like the first inning shouldn't be as um, rocky. Better. Yeah, <laughs> it should be a little better. But um, we scrimmaged Pompton, and so I know a little bit about their hitters and stuff, so we should be pretty good. You scrimmaged West Milford too, right? Yeah. Yeah, so they're going up against teams that they've seen before, so that's definitely advantage. As you see, Delavope striking out Zach Rosen there for two outs now. Maybe look for Vigorosa to try to steal one off Travis here to try to get a runner in scoring position. So how much does that help you as a pitcher, seeing the teams in the preseason? I know you played both West Milford and Pompton Lakes. Does that how, how do you approach the hitters when you've already seen how they hit? Um, well, sometimes it's good because like you know what pitches they hit, and usually I remember how each hitter did against me. But it's also not good because the more at bats you see against the pitcher, it becomes easier to hit them. So I just have to switch it up. Del Volpe steps off, taking his time here, and his first. Tough situation of the game here in the top of the third, no score. Rigoloso on first, you see him there. Or I think they put in a pinch runner for him, courtesy runner, which you'll see them do from time to time. They can put a runner in for the catcher or the pitcher to get him a rest before he has to go out for the next inning. Have the catcher get his gear on. Delavope's first pickoff move is not successful. As Casey Abel comes up, he reached on an error his first time. Dowling booting a ground ball. Nice off-speed pitch there from Della Volpe. Looked like a slider. Got Abel to chase, so he's ahead of Casey Abel 0-1. Well, John, I have to say, Casey's struggling with the low pitch. In his first at bat, he hit a ground ball to Brian and reached on the air, and he's swinging and missing at this low pitch, so Travis wants to keep it low. Not and high. Abel rips one into center field. Zangrilli charging, makes the catch to end the inning. Nice play by Mike Zangrilli there to hold Valley to a scoreless third. So, Erica, before we let you go, you have a states game this week, am I correct? Yes, Tuesday against Pascac Valley. Is that going to be here or in That's PV? PV. Yeah. PV. All right, so if you want to go, Pascac Valley Tuesday, 4 o'clock, right? Yep. All right, so hopefully we'll get some fans out there to cheer on our softball team as they go to, to – Clifton tonight at Memorial Park to take on Compton Lakes for the county championship. Erica, good luck. We'll be rooting for you. Thanks for dropping by. Thank good you luck, very Erica. much for having me. That was Erica Wills, the ace for the softball team. Pitched a great game last night to get her team into the finals. We'll bring Anthony Scadillo back into our broadcast. Hey, guys. <laughs> so, Anthony, you missed the second inning. You were watching it. See anything interesting? Well, I'm impressed by the hit by Luke Riccoloso, that was a nice hit. Uh, also impressed by the catch by Mike Zangrilli. I mean, uh, he plays somewhat of a shallow center field. I mean, most of the people that play center field here, uh, Travis and Mike, play rather shallow, but they both have the speed to get anywhere the baseball is hit. So, a nice catch there, and uh, overall good inning. Yeah, Travis is really getting through the order now. Valley hasn't put a run on the board yet. So he's he's been beating the Travis that we all know and love. If he continues that, Wayne Hills is going to eventually put some runs on the board against Savistano, who's had a surprising good start. I think a lot of people expected Hills to really knock him around a little bit in this game, but Savistano's come out throwing hard. He's been really, really good so far to start off as 
Christian Avedizian steps in the third baseman for the Patriots. John, two of our X-Factors are going to get up this inning. Christian Avedizian batting nine and Brian Dowling batting one. First pitch from Savistano. It's a fastball on the outside corner. Avedizian taking all the way there. 0-1 now on him. Christian, a great power hitter, batting ninth. I mean, that's just a testament to the depth of Wayne Hills' bats. 0-1 curveball. Avedizian sits back on it, drives it to right field. Durr there to make the catch. One out. Nobody on to start things off here in the third. All right, hit the ball solidly there, though, John. I mean, weighted back pretty nicely on it. You just got to, you know, wait a few extra seconds on that and, you know, just dip it over the second baseman's head. Yeah, Christian was a little bit out in front there. But he did a good job handling that curveball on the outside corner. Not a bad 0-1 swing, but just couldn't get it out there far enough, and Durr was there to make the catch. So Dowling steps in now, struck out in his first at-bat. Savistano's delivery is fouled back up into the net. So Savistano, just like Travis, getting ahead of every hitter he faces. Dowling, just a sophomore, the only sophomore in the starting lineup for Wayne Hills. He is batting 366 on the year, so a great sophomore season for Dowling. 561 slugging percentage, 438 on base, so there's a reason he's batting leadoff. He's got some great power, John, really quick hands. <laughs> They're going to give Savistano the call on the outside corner. Fans didn't like it. Dowling, like we said, hit his first run this week. He's got 10 RBIs on the year, 12 runs scored in just 41 at-bats. So a very nice sophomore year for him. The 0-2 is high from Savistano. 1-2 and two now on Brian, which is the same count he struck out, struck out on in his first at-bat. Brian's really got to bear down with two strikes here. He's got to put the ball in place somehow and let his speed take over. The one-two from Savistano. Off-speed pitch driven deep to center field by Dowling. Varelli going back, has room. He's under it to make the catch to retire Dowling for the second out of the inning. So Dowling gave it a ride, but Varelli was there with plenty of space in the spacious outfield here at Wayne Hills that held that one in. Really didn't turn on that enough, John. I mean, a hanging curveball right at your chest. You love that pitch, but kind of went straight through instead of turning on it. You turn on that ball, that could be gone. The pitch was up and away, so it was a tough pitch to handle. He went with the, to op the opposite field, which I think was the right thing to do there. As Della Volpe takes the first pitch outside, 1-0 on him. Varelli showing nice range out there, get going back on the ball, making the play. Next pitch is high, so Savistano's losing a little bit of control here. 2-0 on Eric Della Volpe. Now, uh, Anthony, a lot of these games, Anthony and Joe, they're played at PCT, usually the county tournament. But for some reason today, we're at Wayne Hills, which is great because Wayne Hills is the one seed, Valley the eight seed, I believe, eight or nine seed. So in, at PCT, that could be a home run. I mean, the, that field is just so small as Eric Della Volpe rips one right to Abel, who's there to make the catch and end the inning. So Wayne Hills goes quietly in the third. Savistano able to mow through the hitters. One, two, three there in the third. And Wayne Hills will take the field to start off the fourth. But guys, like we said, most of these games are a PCT, and that's a band box. I mean, it really is. It's such a small field. I mean, do you think Dowling's home run would have been out there, or at least off the wall? John, I think we would be hitting it out there. That, that ball's gone. Uh, actually, you know what? I take Anthony. that back. Center field there is, you know, moderately deep. It's not what we have here, like a 400-foot fence. But it is at least... 360 to center field there, which is a shot. You know, I don't think that would have been gone. Might have hit that. Might have been close. Yeah, like we said, PCT is such a small park. I mean, down the lines, it's probably around 290. I mean, these hitters can hit it out like it's nothing. We went to the Wayne tournament game against PCT, and I think Wayne Hills hit something like five home runs. Solomon hit two. Travis hit two. So, I mean, they pop it out of there like it's nothing. If you see in the background, of Travis warming up there, you see some Valley fans with no shirts on, so they really came out in force for this game. I mean, they just have such a big crowd out there. The parents more into the outfield, the JV and freshman teams and some students out there. You can see really into this game, so trying to get in the head of Travis Della Volpe, but he's a very tough mental performer. Johnny has ice in his veins. He doesn't feel pain. You can't hit a rock. You have to understand that you can't hurt a rock. Is Travis a rock, Anthony? Travis. Travis is a he's a mountain. 
Well, you can hurt a mountain. No, no. Rocks are made of mountains. You can destroy. You, you can destroy mountains. There's a shot of uh, Wayne Hill's field. I'm going to cut you guys off there. But Wayne Valley's fans, as you can see, look at that. They're packing it in here at Wayne Hill, so a short drive for them just across town. So you'd kind of expect to see a lot of fans. You know what, John? Maybe they need the support. You know, Hills Hills doesn't need that kind of thing. They just win. Yeah, Valley Valley's going to need all they can get against Travis. Pitching a gem so far. As he starts things off to the three-hitter, Ryan Durr. Strike on the outside corner. Well, that, that was a nice uh, changeup by the rock, Travis Del Volpe. Del Volpe, five strikeouts, no walks to start things off. He's got a one-hitter going through three. Pitch misses, one and one now to Durr. Grounder up the middle, base. Oh, nope, my bad. Brian's there to make the play. That tipped off to of Delavope's glove, John. Delavope was knocking it down. Tough perspective from where we are to judge the depth of the ball in regards to the fielders. But Dowling makes the play for the first out. As Coach Franrella will head out to the mound now to talk to Delavope, or make his way halfway to the mound at least. He's heading back to the dugout already. John, that's an extremely exhilarating feeling, a ball coming right at you. You don't know what to do. Just throw your gloves there. Try to knock it away from you. And that's what Travis did, and they got an out because of it. Stepping in is Matt Karch, the third baseman. Lined out right back to Travis to end the first inning. His first time up, and he bloops a ball into right field. Belias dives, and it gets past him. Karch will round first. He's headed for two, and he'll make it standing up with a... Single and what will probably be an error on Alex Belias. A blunder that Wayne Hills couldn't afford there, but Travis will try to get him, his team out of it. Bad decision by Belias to die for that ball, and it got past him. Well, that should be scored a single in a E9, getting trying to, run, trying to get to second base. That was a tough play. He knew he wasn't going to catch it the last second, and he probably slipped, and that's why the ball got by him. He couldn't knock it down with his body. Yeah, it's very wet out there. I think in normal circumstances, Belias wouldn't have slid as far, and I think he slid past the ball because it's wet, and uh, that's my, that might have been why he got past them. But nonetheless, there's a runner on second with one out for Valley. The first time they've gotten a runner in scoring position today. Dubnoff at the plate now. He struck out his first time up. Joe, you know, is an outfielder as well as I do. There's balls that you get caught up in. Should I dive? Should I not dive? And I think he was caught in the I'm not going to dive stage and just slid right by it. And yet, you're absolutely right. The toughest thing to do is catch a ball that's going right towards you on a line or even a blooper because you don't know if you're going to catch it or not. And sometimes you're thinking too much, you even lose your footing. You see there John Dubnoff, the first baseman, popping out to Eric Delavolpe in shallow left center field. So both Karch and Dubnoff were swinging first pitch. I mean, I don't, I don't think the coach would like that. I think they'd want to work the counts against Travis. What are you guys' thoughts on attacking him? Because you got to go one way or the other here. you got to either work the count or try to go after him right away and get a first pitch fastball to drive. Well, personally, me, John, I'm an aggressive hitter. So I, if I see a pitch that's a strike, I'm going to swing at it. Yeah, there's different philosophies on what to do in these kind of situations. I mean, there is no pitch count in high school baseball. I think a lot of people would like to see that, but there is no pitch count. So Travis can go as long as he wants. He can pitch the whole game, and he probably will pitch the whole game, especially the way Valley's just swinging at everything. They, they see that's a strike. As Savistano's in now with two outs and a runner on second, so big spot for him. Off-speed pitch misses low for Delavope. Not a bad miss to start things off. John is a hitter. I like to, uh, I like to look at the first few pitches, take my time, and then um, you know, once you get to know how the pitcher throws, you just hack at it. Yeah, that's that's the same approach I take at the plate. Being a JV hitter, I always take the first pitch every single time. I don't care what the situation is. I always like to take a pitch to get into the the at bat and feel out the pitcher, try to judge his speed of his balls. So, I mean, no matter what the situation, I always take a pitch. I like to work the count a little bit, but it just depends on how you feel as a hitter, what you want to do. <laughs> curveball in there for Della Volpe, two and one now. Interesting 2-0 curveball there. But I think Coach Vella calls the pitches for Wayne Hills and Diderno relays them in, but of course Travis has the freedom to shake them off if he likes. John, sometimes when you're struggling with the fastball, it's good to throw an off-speed pitch just to get your motion back. <laughs> and there's another curveball on the outside corner. So back to back, paints of the corner by Della Volpe now. And he's, He's worked it to two and two now. So he's a pitch away from getting out of it. Savistano digs in. 
Karch leads from second. And the 2-2. Ground ball up the middle. Base hit in the center field. Zangrilli charges. The throw will come to the plate. Cut off by Kevin Solomon. And Valley takes the 1-0 lead here in the fourth. So Wayne Valley gets to Della Volpe for their first run of the game. An RBI single for Pete Savistano, the pitcher. Karch comes in to score 1-0 Indians. You can see what errors lead to there, John. I mean, knowing from experience on the mound, watching an error happen and then run scoring off it is just devastating. Just extremely devastating. It hurt, hurts every part of your body, you know. Just, just bad. So an unearned run given up by Della Volpe. Well, that looked like a tough pitch for Seth Stanner to hit. It was a great, it was a good hit. You, you can't do anything about it. Yeah, he did a great job of going with that ball right back up the middle. And he hit it hard, got through for a hit. And an early 1-0 lead. As now, Savistano will come out for a courtesy runner. Looks like sophomore Mike Tallarico. It is Mike Tallarico. So Tallarico will run for Savistano. He'll still be in the game, don't worry. Just a courtesy runner, you're allowed to do that, like I said before, with two outs. Or really with any outs. Pitcher or catcher can be run for just for the inning. As Tim Ronk of the DH steps in. He struck out also his first time. It'll be interesting to see if they bring Tallarico in to maybe steal a base off the Derno because it's, I don't think too many guys are going to hit extra base hits against Della Volpe. So if you can get a guy in scoring position with two outs, that's big. You see Tallarico's leadoff first. Della Volpe comes home, fastball on the outside corner, strike one on Ronca. Or strike two on Ronca, excuse me. The pinch runner threw me off. I came in midway, midway through the at-bat. DO2 pitch. Curveball popped into shallow right. Could be trouble. Dowling going out. And he makes the over-the-shoulder catch. Great play by Brian Dowling. As he and Belias converged and they communicated well. Dowling there to make the play to end the inning. So Della Volpe gives up a run on one hit and one error. Or two hits, excuse me. Two singles. And the error on Belias, the key play in the inning. So Wayne Hills is going to have to battle back now against Savistano. They've yet to score in three innings. Yeah, John, I mean, Savistano's throwing the heat right now. Maybe work the count a little bit, get his arm, you know, tired. He hasn't thrown a little bit. You know, he's had some people on base. Time between innings is a real killer. I mean, if you have a rally going, your arm just, you know, sags, you know. So Crosstown Rivals meeting here at Wayne Hills, Wayne Valley. Doesn't happen too often considering we're not in the same league, but every now and then it comes along in the postseason and it's always a big deal when Hills takes on Valley. We saw it in the football state finals a couple years ago with Wayne Hills winning 27-7. But now with the new leagues coming out this year, Wayne Hills will play Wayne Valley, as you see, at Wayne Valley High School on Friday, September 25th at 7 o'clock. So that'll surely be a big game. A lot of townspeople will show up to that. And it should be interesting. It's the week before Wayne Hills takes on St. Joe's, so Wayne Hills is going to have to not overlook Valley, which I'm sure they won't. But they got a big game after that, so it should be a great game at Wayne Valley. You should be able to bring that game to you. We'll, we'll see. Let's see if they can start off the inning here. Travis Della Volpe leading off the inning. You know, powerful hitter. Powerful hitter. Has uh, multiple home runs on the year. Actually, two at PCT against PCT in a Wayne tournament. Mm -hmm. See if he could uh, He's got five saw on something the year. off. Five homers on the year to lead the Patriots. Del Volpe batting third in the order. He's trying to help himself out here, trying to get on base, start up a little bit of a rally because Wayne Hills needs it. First pitch misses up and away on Del Volpe, 1 0. You just see the intensity on his face. He's focused. He wants to hit one over right here. Hey, you know what? It's always nice to help yourself out. You're right. Oh, one in the dirt. Uh, one zero in the dirt. Excuse me. It's now two and zero on Travis. Travis is a great competitor, of course. He's also the point guard on the Wayne Hills basketball team, or was the point guard. And he's a big star for Wayne Hills baseball. He's got to step up for his boys here because right now they're just not hitting Savistano. Got to get him out of his zone. Once you once you get a few hits going, you know. As a pitcher, it's really intimidating watching another batter come up to the plate with people in scoring position. And Travis has opened up a 3-0 count. And if Savistano walks the leadoff guy, that's a great opportunity for Hills. Is the 3-0 is low ball four. So a 
Four straight balls to open up the fourth, and Della Volpe is on to lead off the inning. That's exactly what Hills was looking for, a mistake Sabastano just can't afford. And now the Wayne Hills with the meat of their order up to try to drive in a run and tie the game up. Jordan Kessel up. He flew out to center his first time up. With Della Volpe on first. No, pin, no courtesy runner yet. I don't know if we'll see one. Wayne Hills calling up sophomore Justin Farrell as a possible runner. Sam Birchall runs also, but he's playing left, so I'm not sure if he's eligible to pinch run. He probably isn't. You know, Kessel thinks he's hitting really bad, so before the game, he was on our monitor, mirroring himself, trying to look at his swing to see what he was doing wrong. That's how into the game he is, and that's how hard he works. Hey, Jordan has always been a fantastic player, a good hitter, a great defensive catcher. You know, right now they have the Derno. Next year, he looks to be the starting catcher. He's got a good arm. You know what? He's got big things coming towards him. You know, he just got to hit the ball right now. A little bit of a slump, but, you know, everybody gets into those. Savistano checks on Travis. Talking about Jordan Kessel, I mean, you have to really have to give a lot of credit to his father, Sandy, a great coach in Little League. I think we all played for him at some point in our careers, really helping his son out, and he's a great coach. But uh, Jordan's been a great player all through his life, getting a ton of at-bats here as a junior, which is great for him. As the 0-1 from Savistano, Kessel fouls it back. Oh, he's in an 0-2 hole now, so he's going to have to battle. Wayne Valley looking for a grounder to try to turn two. Kessel not the fastest guy you'll find. So, so Savistano is trying to keep the ball low here, get a grounder. That'd be great for him to get out of a jam and really start to get Wayne Hills frustrated because if they don't score here, they're really going to start to get upset with themselves at the plate. Savistano ahead, 0-2. Travis leads off first. And the pitch, Kessel fouls it off. Swung at a high fastball. Would have been a ball, but he's able to get the bat on the baseball and hey, stay you know, alive. When you're in a slump, you're, you're just swinging at everything. You just want to get that hit. You just, and once you get that hit, you can you be cool, calm, and collective at the plate. Kessel with six extra base hits on the air, batting 316 like we mentioned before. Probably a little lower now after that fly out, but just a couple points. Savistano from the stretch. 0-2 count on Kessel. Curveball low. Kessel fouls it off. Great piece of hitting there to foul that tough pitch off. Nice curve from Savistano. Some of those curveballs you're able to just uh, just get a nice little hack at it. Sometimes drive it over the second baseman's head. That's, that's always a nice piece of hitting. That, because that sounds like one of your hits, you know, just little dinkers over someone's head. Yeah, that's what I try to do. I just flip a ball into left center as a lefty hitter. You know, drive the ball opposite field if it's a tough pitch. As Castle takes it up and away, ball one. It's a good piece of hitting, though. That's what you got to do. Jordan trying to battle back from an 0-2 hole now. Good at bat so far. Savistano takes a look at Travis. Takes a deep breath and fires. Fastball fouled off again by Kessel. So Jordan having a very nice at bat here. See, he's setting himself up perfectly for a change up or a curveball right there with the fastball low inside, maybe a curveball away. Or maybe go reverse psychology and throw another fastball at him because Jordan probably will be looking for an off-speed pitch just trying to foul off a fastball if it comes. I see breaking ball here. It's breaking ball, and Kessel drives it into right center. Durr is there, and he's able to make the catch. Routine fly ball from Kessel. He hit it hard. But Durr was positioned perfectly to make the play. So that's the first out in the inning. Kessel's now over two. And Travis remains at first. Solomon is last at back. Got a nice infield hit to get the Patriots first base runner. That's just one of two hits for Wayne Hill so far. So Savistano, three and a third innings in just two hits. Against such a great lineup in Wayne Hill is very surprising. One Travis. of the best hitters up, though, Kevin Solomon. First pitch is a breaking ball. Fouled off toward the first base side. 0-1 on Solomon. Kevin, the junior first baseman for Wayne Hill, is a great defensive first baseman. 
batting 475 on the season and 813 slugging percentage. So he's just a force. Four home runs, 30 RBIs, leads the team in RBIs. Leads the league in RBIs. Leads the team, at least the team, in average slugging percentage. So the slugger for Wayne Hills, but he pops this one up to the left side. Karch is there to make the play. So Wayne Hills is not hitting off Savistano. Two outs and a runner on first now. They really can't strand Travis at first after a leadoff walk. And now Mike Zangrilli will come to the plate, the six hitter for Wayne Hills and the center fielder. Made a good play earlier in the game to stop a possible Wayne Valley little run. See, this is interesting because Mike has the power to go go yard here and Savistano throws it hard enough that you can just hit the ball solid and it's, it's gonna go far. I you know a nice belt high fastball. Whew. It's going places, John. <laughs> Are you saying you're calling the ball oh, going I'm, out? I'm calling a shot right here. Curveball down the left field line, foul territory. That'll be out of play. Zing really turned on that off-speed pitch, but couldn't wait for it long enough, and it went foul. He pulled a foul. So if there's a time to steal, this would be it for Coach Ionello. Travis with pretty good speed at first. And Savistano, as we've seen, not a great move to first. We've yet to see Luke Rigoloso's arm. Or actually, we've seen it once on the throw to third. It looked pretty, pretty solid. But we should see if they'll steal or hope for Mike Zangrilli to hit an extra base hit to get Travis in. The 0 1 pitch is high, 1 and 1 now on Zangrilli. Zangrilli struck out his first time up. We'll see what he does this time in a big situation. And he drives this one. High fly ball, left center field. Outfielders converging, and it'll be the left fielder over to make the play and end the inning. So Zangrilli gave it a ride, but the left fielder, Zach Rosen, was there to make the play to end the inning. So guys, through four innings, it's one nothing Wayne Valley. I don't think anyone expected Wayne Hills to be held scoreless through four. I, I didn't see it, John. I thought maybe Travis, maybe even Belias can go deep and get, get some runs on the board, but it's just not happening through the first four innings. Yeah, Wayne Hills with only two hits through four innings. Definitely not what they expected. Two singles, too. And one was an infield single, so they've really only had one solid hit thus far. And just, I mean, you have to get credit to Savistano. I don't think anyone saw this coming. Wayne Hills scored 10 runs off him the first time. So they're definitely going to be frustrated at the plate. It'll be interesting to see as they go through the order the third time around if they can catch up to Savistano's fastball and drive the ball. Because right now, most of their outs have been on the curveball. They're just not getting around fast enough on the fastball, so they're going to have to step it up and help themselves out because right now they're down one nothing and they can't afford to lose this game. I mean, they're the one seed, Valley the eight, so they're not supposed to lose this game. John, they just need to scratch away a few hits, hit by hit, you know, getting the pitch count up. That's where it's at, John. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you think Coach I will put any replacements in the game if one of his starters just not getting the job done. Do you see him possibly going to a Rich Merchard off the bench or Steve Levenbrook and maybe to, I don't know how they'd get him in, but Steve Levenbrook, Justin Farrell, there's a bunch of guys on the bench. We've got some pitchers that are available tonight. I mean, if Travis is pitching the way he's pitching, he's going to go the whole game, no question about that. But, I mean, do you see them maybe mixing things up at all? Only person I see coming in is maybe Rich Merchard going into third base and then Birch hit for himself. Um, it's going to be interesting because Avedisian and Rich Matrude, neither of them are fantastic hitters, but nobody's hitting right now. So you can't just blame the people who aren't hitting overall the season. You can blame everybody who's not hitting today. Exactly. So I, I think you'd expect Coach I to stick with these guys who have been in the lineup all year as Travis's first pitch is a strike to... Marcus Virgilito, the eight hitter for the Patriots, junior second baseman, popped out to short his first time up. Pitch misses inside, it looked like. It looked like a good pitch, one and one now. I've been keeping track of the pitches for both pitchers. Neither of them are in danger of coming out of the game. Travis has thrown 55 to this point, 50 for Savistano. So they will probably go the whole game unless they get into serious trouble. One and two on Virgilito. Nice curveball there from Delavope. 
Throws another off-speed pitch. Misses up and in. Virgilito, a small zone with sh more of a short hitter. Two strikes, John. Gotta open that zone up a little more. Says in the Tin Can League. What's a Tin Can League, Anthony? Tin Can League, Joe, is where you have a strike zone the size of a tin can. Okay, I've never heard of that before. Oh. Have you heard of that before? Ask your dad about the Tin Can League, Joe. <laughs> Travis Delafopi, nice job getting off the mound. PFP practice paying off once again. It's a tough play down the third base line. Christian Evadizian giving way to Delafopi, who's a great fielder. He really filled his position well. He made a strong throw over to Solomon at first. Another off-speed pitch. Rigoloso way out in front, fouls it off into his own dugout. Joe, as an umpire, yeah, actually, all three of us are umpires. As an umpire, Little League how, umpire. how much do you open the strike zone with two strikes? I mean, is it, is it, you know, are you going from knees to chest or, you know, just more than that? I'm going maybe a little, little under, just a little bit lower than the knees to maybe letters. Well, we do umpire a Little League, so I think our strike zones are a little bit bigger than varsity baseball, but. Well, I have to say, I, I do some big field games, maybe, maybe a, a level below high school, and the strike zone does get smaller. Yeah, it, make, it makes the game a little bit longer, but I'm getting paid for it. Your dad is a uh, an extremely good umpire, Joe. I mean, he's got a consistent strike. And it's all about consistency as an umpire. I mean, you can't go one way and not the other for both teams. Yeah, I, I think even if you don't agree with the umpire strike zone, if he's calling it the same way for both teams, I think you, you can't really complain. Slow roller to third. Christian Avedizian to his right, throws to first. Nice pick by Kevin Solomon to make the play. Tough play for Avedizian to throw is in the dirt, but handled strongly by Kevin Solomon. Beautiful play by him for the second out of the inning. So, Wayne Hills avoids a possible sticky situation. So now with two outs, nobody on this leadoff hitter, Zach Rosen, will be up. That's a great athletic play by Christian Avedizian. I mean, that, that, that could be a big play with man on first with one out. Wayne Valley can do some things, and Christian Avedizian was determined not to let that happen. And a big offense, all-state lineman for Wayne Hills, showing off some athleticism there. Nice play by Avedizian as the first pitch from Delavopi is low and in. Not only was that a nice play by Avedizian, but a great stretch there by Kevin Solomon and the pick. Yeah, he's a great defensive first baseman. He scoops just about everything. I mean, in practice, when I'm throwing at him from first, did you see a grounder? As a, I think I might have jinxed Kevin Solomon because he just booted a grounder. Tough play, but Rosen's able to reach safely. Probably will be an error on Solomon. Would have been a tough play. Travis would have had to make a nice tag of the base but it should be an error on Solomon. So with two outs and a runner on first, Casey Abel will come to the plate. He's 0 for 2, reached on an error in the first inning. We'll see, the, we'll see if Rosen would try to swipe one here. With two outs and a runner on first. I think Casey sees the ball much better than Travis Delvolpe. His last day back, he had a nice line drive to Mike Singarelli. He just happened to go right to him and he, and he caught it. Abel shows bunt on. I can guarantee you he's not going to put one down here with two outs. Dalavopi missed up and away, so maybe the tactic worked for Valley there. The 1-0 grounder to third, handled by Avedizian. The throw to first in plenty of time to end the inning. So Avedizian makes two nice plays in the inning, and Wayne Hills will come up to bat in the bottom of the fifth, down one nothing. John, they have to be more aggressive at the plate. They're letting fastballs get by him. You know, bat speed. Right now, Savistano throws hard, bat speed. Get the bat around. Start your stride earlier, just hit the ball. That's a great point, Anthony. That's what I was trying to get at before. I mean, they're just getting blown away by Savistano's fastball right now. They got to swing earlier. They got to make some adjustment, move back in the box. I don't exactly know what they have to do. Depends on the hitter, but they're going to have to change things because right now, four scoreless is not acceptable in a county game. Against someone who you scored ten runs off the first ten runs off of the first time, so I really don't know why they're not hitting him. But so you have to give credit to Savasano for pitching a heck of a, heck of a game. Savasano features his fastball at least in this game, but he does have good off-speed stuff as you see there. Fastball, curveball, changeup—the typical three pitches for a high school pitcher. But he's definitely throwing all of them for strikes today, and he's throwing them effectively. As he's ready to start off the top of the or bottom of the fifth, 
So things getting late now. one nothing Valley, bottom of the fifth. Wayne Hills will have the bottom of their order up with the seven hitter Belias, catcher Ryan Daderno, and Christian Avedizian up in this inning. And I think at this point, Wayne Hills just has to be aggressive because, like I said, Savistano just 50 pitches. He's going to be pitching this whole game. So they got to look for a pitch they can drive and do something with it. They can't be taking strikes right this, at this point. They have to be aggressive. As Belias steps in, he singled his first time up. The only solid hit for Wayne Hills in the game. So he'll look to do that again. Savistano working from the windup. I think Belias has to get on here to set the table and then he'll steal base, get a runner in scoring position. John, look at those eyes on him. He has determination written all over that. You know, he's into this game. He wants this a lot more than anybody else does. He could just be a psycho. You can tell that, Joe. Belias is a very passionate player. Gets very into the games. Pitches low in the dirt. Nice block by Rigoloso. Nobody on, so didn't save anything, but looked good. No. Well, Belias, he's had a great year. He's he leads the team in hits and second on the team in averages, and uh, he ha he has a few bombs this year. So see what he can do here. He's actually second on the team in hits. Joe Solomon has 38. Belias 34, but he has had a great season nonetheless. He's ahead in the count now, two and one. Swing and a miss. Belias swinging for the fences, and Savistano blew it past him, two and two now. No, he swing, swing and missed. That was a nice aggressive cut by Belias. That's probably the hardest swing we've seen all day from these Patriot hitters. Absolutely, nice swing by by Belias, but he wasn't able to catch up to the fastball. Two two pitch, another fastball misses low and away. Good eye from Alex. He's worked the count full now. Now, Anthony, in this situation, are you looking, as a pitcher, are you are you looking just straight fastball, try to get a strike, or are you mixing things up? No, no. Uh, on the mound, I like to throw curveball with uh, two strikes, even 0-2, 1-2, any count, but especially 3-2, get them off balance. Most people are thinking fastball, as Alex Bias strikes out there on a fastball. But, you know, I like to throw the curveball. Savistano confident in his fastball. It's been working for him all day and it works once again as he strikes out Belias for the first out here in the fifth. So now De Ryan Diderno will be up at bat. Grounded out to third his first time up. And he grounds it toward third again. This time goes foul into the Valley fans. Looks like someone just got hit. I don't break your shin. Unless they had a shin guard on. I didn't. Joe. If I had to imagine a fan is not wearing a shin guard. It's possible. All right, Joe. Hopefully that fan's okay. Come on, Ryan! Oh, one on Ryan Diderno. Savistano in his motion, the pitch. Curveball misses high. Ended up as a close pitch, but it's where it crosses home, not where the catcher catches it. So clearly a ball. One and one now on Ryan. Curveball, swing and a miss from Diderno. Nice pitch there from Savistano. Got Ryan fishing down low. That was just a great pitch right there. One and two now, Savistano looking for his fourth strike out of the night. And it's gonna hit Diderno. So he'll go to first base. That's a big mistake from Savasano who had the Derno one and two. And now courtesy runner Justin Avid Justin Ferrarella, excuse me, will run for the catcher Ryan DeDerno. Speed demon, John. Yes, Justin's our junior varsity teammate. He's a great center fielder for us. He dresses varsity games to run for Ryan DeDerno, the catcher. He has phenomenal speed. He can steal a base just off just about anyone. Even as a sophomore, John, probably the fastest kid on the team. He just might be. I mean, he flies. I mean, if we get a chance to see him run, it'll be exciting. Definitely will. So with one out, Savistano has given up a hit by pitch. That's really the only way Wayne Hills has been able to get on the last few innings. As Christian Avedizian steps into the box with 
an opportunity to possibly drive in a run. Christian flat, flat out to right his last time up. And he drives this one into right field, drops in front of Durf for a base hit. Christian Avedizian with a single, and Wayne Hills is in business with one out here in the fifth. That's a big There's hit by your Christian X Factor, John. Big hit from Christian Avedizian to set things up for the top of the order. Dowling comes up now with a runner in scoring position and one, one out as Savistano will have a meeting at the hill with his coach. Jeff Hoover's the head coach from Valley. I'm not sure if this is him out at the mound. It is Jeff Hoover. As the whole infield meets in a huddle. As you see there, Valley is going to have to step up now and battle these Wayne Hills hitters because they are threatening now and it's late in the game and they'll they'll be out there smelling blood this, at this point. They're not going to mess around any longer. It's time to hit and put up a rally and try to take a lead here in the fifth. It all started with a hit by pitcher Ryan Diderno. Well, let's see if we can get something started here. Ryan Dowling, obviously a super sophomore for the Wayne Hills Patriots. And he swings and misses out a curveball. Anxious there to try to come up huge for his team. Dowling 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a flyout. As you see, Avedizian leading off first. Dubnoff not holding him on. It looks like a changeup on the outside corner, 0 and 2. Dowling didn't like the call, but he is now in an 0-2 hole. And at this point, you just want to make contact. The strikeout's the last thing you need right now. So if Dowling can just put the ball in play, he's a pretty fast runner. He should, probably won't be doubled up. The 0-2, Dowling holds up. Great play discipline there on a nice curveball from Savistano in the dirt. Fly ball here gets him over, John. Oh, with one out, Anthony, I don't, th I don't know if they're necessarily looking for a fly ball. I think they want to hit here from the sophomore Brian Dowling. Well, of course, but anything to get guys over. Savistano steps off, looks over at Farrella at second, because Valley was not holding on, holding him on, so now Virgilito and Abel will both head over there. Try to keep Justin close at second. The one, two, fastball driven deep to right center. Verrilli going over. For Brian Dowling, Farrella comes in to score and Wayne Hills ties it up at one. Big hit from Brian Dowling and Wayne Hills has two men in runners in scoring position with one out. That's a big hit by the solver, Brian Dowling. Anthony, that's your X Factor right there. And it is, Joe. Good call, Scadillo, because Dowling just drove in the time run, and now Abedizian's on third, as you see. Dowling on second. Wayne Hills is in business in the fifth. Here comes Eric Delavolpe to the plate. One of those seniors of, on the team. The Plus situation for him. The sluggers are up now for Wayne Hills, so Savistano in great danger of losing this game. Pitches high on Eric. Starts up a 1-0 count as Wayne Hills' fans are Energized by that big hit from Dowling. The 1-0, fastball on the outside corner, 1-1. One one. What was this pitch there? I saw the shake of the head afterwards. He was looking for a better pitch to hit, maybe middle lane. That was on the outside corner, so that was a great pitch by Savistan. Tough fastball outside, hard to hit. When you talk about composure, that's exactly what Savistano needs here. Fastball driven to left field. That'll at least get a run in if it's fair. And they're going to call it foul. The ball hooked quite a bit down the line. Off the bat, it looked like it would be a two RBI hit for Eric Delavolpe, but it hooked foul. Tough break for him as he's now in a 1-2 hole. Savistano lucky there. Hung a, hung a curveball. Can't do that. You can't. It's one of the few mistakes he's made to this afternoon. He's been very accurate with all his pitches tonight. One and two on Eric. Here's the pitch. Curveball just missed inside. Valley wanted the call. It looked like a good pitch. Rigoloso might have been setting up that way. That's as close as he's gonna get with two <laughs> strikes, John. Yeah, I'm sure Coach I's not happy with that take, but got away with it. So Delavolpe with another life now. 
Dowling leads off second. Abadizian leads off third. Single Sadis here score Dowling. He's got speed. Yeah, definitely. If it's a close play, they might hold him up just because there's one out, but you'd expect a hit to the outfield to score two and really open things up for the Patriots. But Savasano's going to have to hold him here because Travis is not going to give up too many runs. Here's the 2-2. Swing and a miss from Eric Della Volpe. Savastano gets the K. Big strikeout for him. As now it's all on the back of Travis Della Volpe, the starting pitcher for the Patriots. This is the situation he wants to be in. A tie ball game in the bottom of the fifth against Valley. As now Rigoloso will head out to the mound to talk to his junior starting pitcher. So these are the situations Travis Della Volpe lives for. As you see Savistano doing some mound work there. Travis steps in, 0 for 1 with a walk this afternoon. Two outs, runners on second and third for Wayne Hills. The first pitch, driven deep to right field. Durr going back at the track, looking up. It's out of here. And Wayne Hills. Takes a four to one lead. What a shot by Travis oh. Del Volpe. Oh, he hit a bomb. You could have called that off the bat. Fastball bit part of the plate, and he just stroked it. Oh, baby. You see Ryan Dirt hopping over the fence there. That's not going to help you. A three run homer for Travis Del Volpe, and Wayne Hills opens up a four to one lead. And off comes Jordan Kessel, another powerful hitter. Trying to get out of a slump, this would be a great time to do it. That was a shot by Travis, and he gave his team a 4-1 lead, and now Kessel hits it deep to center. Virilli going back, and he has enough room to make the play. So Kessel gave it a ride, and that'll end the inning. But the flyout came one pitch too late, because the superstar, Travis De Volpe, went yard to right field. A ball exploding off his bat for a three-run home. Hey, that all started with Ryan Dederno getting hit with the pitch. See what can happen, John. So One thing leads to another. Well, Savistano's mistake comes back to haunt him. And now Travis Della Volpe will head out to the mound with the 3-1 lead that he just gave himself. So Wayne Hills can smell the semifinals now. Well, this is Travis's game right here. He's going to close it down for these next two innings. He's got to throw strikes, keep his composure, because I'm sure he has a lot of adrenaline just hitting that home run. And you can guarantee that the Valley hitters will be out there fully focused to try to come back in this game. But it's going to be awfully tough with the ace, Travis Della Volpe, on the mound. So Wayne Hills with the 4-1 lead now. Big turnaround because they were down for a while and it looked like they weren't going to be able to score off Savistano, but a big RBI double from Dowling and then an even bigger three-run homer from Travis. <laughs> and just like that, Wayne Hills is up 4-1 to one and in control <laughs> of the game. That's huge, Sean. Doesn't get much bigger than that. No, it was small. Yes, it was huge. I agree with you, Anthony. That's a big hit. Probably the biggest hit of his high school career. He's had a lot of those and a lot of big performances on the mound, too. But none bigger than that three-run homer to maybe sink his crosstown rival and friends, the Wayne Hills Page uh, sorry, the Wayne Valley Indians. So now Wayne Hills' defense is going to try to tighten up and hold this lead for Wayne Hills. Any defense's replacements Coach I has on the bench, he'll certainly use now with a three-run lead. Did you see Kevin Solomon there, our first baseman for Wayne Hills? I think three, four, five coming up this inning, John. You see, just like that, the Wayne, Hill, the Wayne Valley fans have sat Shut down up. and they're quiet now. They need some type of spark now as Ryan Durr leads things off in the top in the top of the sixth. We play seven innings in high school baseball. As Durr hits one down the right field line, Belay is coming over. And he can't make the play as it heads into the corner. Durr rounds second, he's digging for three. The relay comes in, not nearly in time. A stand-up triple for Ryan Durr. And Wayne Valley is up just like that. And Coach Rell is going to go to the hill to talk to Mr. Delavopi after that play. Nothing you could do on those. I mean, we've talked about the conditions of the field today. It's wet. It is wet, and it is hard to get traction on this field. Well, you're talking about, you talk about coming back after a tough inning. 
first pitch Durr sees, he drives down the right field line for a triple. As now Wayne Hills has a conference on the mound with Coach Rella leading the discussion, the whole infield in there. Johnny playing back or in right here? Up oh, you're three. playing back. You're with, with a three-run lead, Anthony? Three-run lead, but you just got to get the outs at this point. This run, I mean, obviously it means something, but as far as Wayne Hills is concerned, it doesn't mean anything. They just got to get the outs at this point. Six outs away from the county semis. You can't worry about that runner. First pitch from Travis is up and away. Ball to Matt Karch, the third baseman for Wayne Valley. Delaf will be up to 69 pitches now, so he's doing fine as far as the pitch count's concerned. And it's a drive foul. Nice rip there by Matt Karch down the third base line. So it's a one and one count now on him as Birchall goes to field, field that ball and bring it back in. Delavopi shakes off to Derno in the one one pitch. Off speed, looked like a change up in the dirt blocked by Derno. Looks like he short armed that one a little bit. He's gotta use full arm extended. Yeah, Travis's mechanics are almost spotless at this point in his career. 2-1. Outside, ball three. So Travis cannot afford a walk here as that'll bring the tying run to the plate. He's just got to throw strikes at this point and trust his fielders to make the plays. He's yet to walk anyone, so... This one's driven into left field for a base hit. Matt Karch drives in Ryan Durr, and Valley's rallying here in the top of the six. It's now four to two, Wayne Hills. John Dubnoff comes up to bat now. The left-hander, number 24, struck out and lined out in this game. Travis has to keep his composure. He's got a roll pair here. Get a ground ball and they'll turn two. And 4-2, four four two, it's just how I called it. Right, guys? That's my score, right? Mm -hmm. That it is, Joe. A double play would be great here for Wayne Hills to snub out any rally Wayne Valley might be forming. And if Delavope goes into the seventh inning with a two-run lead, I mean, it's going to be awfully tough for Rally to come back, so they're going to have to try to score here with Karch at first and in the middle of their order up with Dubnoff the five hitter and then Savistano the six hitter who had an RBI single his last time. So if Delavope can get through these two guys, they should be all right. The first pitch is low and away. Dubnoff showed bunt there. An interesting call by the Jeff Hoover, the coach, as he looked to bunt with his five hitter there. I don't know if I was a fake or if it was a design sacrifice. We'll, we'll see on this pitch. The 1-0 from Della Volpe, swinging this time, pitches high, and the runner goes, and Karch makes it. Tough ball to throw on from Dederno. He had to throw around the hitter. He actually came, he threw it over the hitter's shoulder, and it was, a, it was a decent throw, but didn't have enough on it to get Karch. So now, Valley with a runner in scoring position, and the double play is out of the question. So that's a big stolen base for Wayne Valley. It's just a grounder to third. Abadizian looks the runner back to second, throws to first. Great stretch by Kevin Solomon to finish off the play. Not a perfect throw from Abadizian, but Solomon with a great stretch over there at first to get the out. So now there's one out in the sixth. They hold Karch at second, which is huge, with one out. That's, that's a big play by the senior, Christian Abadizian. He had to hold the runner in second. Now Travis. He gives the ground ball to second or first. Still, still has two outs. Still, can get out of the inning without giving up a run. See if Christian had not held him there, a run could have scored on a fly ball. That's a great job by Christian. First pitch to Savastano misses in one and zero. Oh. A lot of pressure on Dederno now to keep the ball in front of him because if Valley can get a runner on third with one out, all they need is a fly ball or a grounder if Wayne Hills plays back. Grounder to third, foul ball just off the line. Abedizian was over there to make a backhand, but he didn't need to as the ball rolled foul. So one and one now on Savistano. One for two on the day, an RBI single in the fourth, and a strikeout in the second. Delavobi hasn't struck anyone out since this third inning, so 
Valley's starting to make contact now with the ball. They're not being fooled as often as they were early on in the game. Here's the 1-1 one -one from Travis. In the dirt, swinging a miss from Savistano. Nice pitch by Travis as he is pumping himself up on the hill. One pitch away from striking out Savistano and putting himself in a much better position. John, you know from catching when someone on the mound, on the mound is in the zone, they, they go nuts. They just go nuts. Christian makes the play, looks the runner back again. An identical play to the first one, except this throw was perfect from Abedizian. So now Valley has two outs and a runner on second. Travis trying to get out of a jam here. Well, back to that place. Christian had to make a good throw, and he did both times. So big plays by the third baseman. Tim Ronka, the senior DH, will come up now with two outs and a runner on second. If he can get a hit here, he really puts the pressure on Wayne Hills. The first pitch is fouled back by Ronka. He had a nice shot before John that went foul. Lucky break for Hills that, at that point. Let's see if Travis can get it done here. Travis trying to work out of a sixth inning jam and he makes a fake over to second. Trying to keep Karch close. The 0-1, curveball, bloop toward third. Avedizian's there, he makes the catch. Travis doesn't even watch it. He, had, he trusts his third baseman to make the play. Inning is over. Great comeback from Della Volpe to get out of the jam. Christian Avedizian makes all three putouts in the inning, and Wayne Hills heads to the bottom of the sixth with a 4-2 advantage. Hey, you see one slip up doesn't lead too far. Luckily, they had the composure to keep it going. 80 pitches now for Della Volpe. He will surely not come out of the game at this point. So Valley gets one run on two hits there. The big hit, the triple by Ryan Durr. And they cash in on a Matt Karch single. Valley with just, he, they didn't have a hit till the fourth inning, they now have four for the game. Savistano will stay in the game. He is at, by my count, 72 pitches to this point. It's a pretty good number for five innings. Very good number. So Wayne Hills will have Solomon Zangrilli and Belias to start off the sixth. Solomon one for two. Sing infield single in the second popped out to third in the fourth. Zangrilli is 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a flyout, but Solomon steps in now against the right-hander, Savistano. First pitch, fastball on the outside corner, strike one. Good location there from Savistano. 0-1 on Solomon. Solomon can just take his time up for a good pitch to hit because now they got the lead, so there's less pressure on him. Yeah, it's true, Joe. You can just... Be calm at the plate, wait for your pitch. And he grounds this one down the first baseline. Dubnoff can't handle it and it's down the line. Solomon turns first and he's digging for two. They'll test the arm of Ryan Durr. The throw comes in. Safe at second is, Ryan, is Kevin Solomon. That's a double for Solomon down the first baseline. Dubnoff couldn't handle the hit. Durr made a good throw, but it was not in time. Good running there from Solomon and Wayne Hills is threatening once again in the seventh. That was a great hit by Solomon. Pulled it right down the line, and that's a hustle double. John, it's the bottom of the sixth. Bottom of the sixth, excuse me. The next inning is the seventh. As Zangrilli's steps in now. First pitch, fastball, low and away. Again, he has a lot of power, John. He can hit the ball. My. See if Ziggy could do something here. Curveball chopped off the dugout foul. Come on, Mike, go. One one 
count here for Mike Zangrilli, Savas Dano. So a little more pitches this inning. A few more hits and last. See if they can keep it up. You mean before, like early in the game, because last thing he gave up a three run home run. So. Yes, Joe. Zangrilli swings and misses at a fastball up in the zone. Nice cut from him, mad at himself that he couldn't catch up to it, because if he did, that ball was going long. Looks like Andrew Ferber is going to go to the bullpen now for Wayne Valley, the sophomore pitcher, doing a fantastic job for Wayne Valley this year. Ferber, a guy that both me and Anthony have caught in our baseball career, stepped up this year for Valley as the pitch is fouled back by Zangrilli, stays alive. Andrew Ferber has been the workhorse for Valley this year. I believe he pitched 10 innings in one game through something like 140 pitches, so I mean he's no stranger to the varsity mound. And we might see him in this game if Savastano can't work himself out of a jam here. Zangrill is really focused right now. He wants to get a hit. Zangrilli hits one down the left field line. Rosen dives, can't make the play. Foul ball. It's great effort by Zach Rosen. He just couldn't come up with it. Rosen showing some great speed there as he got into foul territory quick and made a dive, a great attempt to lay out for that ball. So Zangrilli still a one-two count now. One and two on Mike Zangrilli. Solomon leads off second. They're, on, they're not holding him on. Ball's ripped down the left field line. Base hit. Solomon. Oh, they're going to call it foul, I believe. Yes, it's foul. Solomon will head back to second. That ball just missed heading down the line. That would have been an RBI for Zangrilli, but instead he'll go back to his one-two count. So Zangrilli steps back in. This is the seventh pitch of the at-bat. So he's, he's really into the ball right now, John. Fouled off three in a row. Let's see if you can get a hit here. Hit here, three-run lead, that's, that's enormous. Ripped to Abel. I don't know if he caught it on a fly. And they're going to say he did, and he doubles off Solomon at second. Tough break for the Patriots. Zangrilli ripped it, but a nice play by Casey Abel, the sophomore, to catch that on a fly and just flip to second for the easy double play. Nothing Solomon can do about that. That looked like it bounced, John. Maybe it was it bouncing after it got in his glove, but... Nah, he, I think he caught it and it went to the tip of his glove, so... It was a smart play by Abel to just flip it to second to try to sell the call to the umps, and he did it successfully, so... Just like that, Wayne Hills is two outs and nobody on. Tough break for Zangrilli, because he hit a rope right there. But an even better play by Abel to snag it and double up Solomon. So now Belias steps in, one for two. And he swings and misses at a fastball up in the zone. Nice cut from him. He's definitely swinging for an extra base hit, which is what Wayne Hills needs at this point. I mean, a single doesn't do much good unless you can string together a couple more hits after that. Another healthy cut from Belias. One and two now on him. Savistano trying to work through six innings of work. Sean, I think he's swinging for more than an extra base hit there. He's swinging out of his shoes and his helmet. Ooh, and they're going to call strike three on the outside corner. Pitch looked to be maybe a little bit low, but Belias goes down looking. So that'll do it for Wayne Hills in the sixth. But Travis Della Volpe heads out for the seventh inning of action with Wayne Hills leading 4-2 to two in the quarterfinals of the Passaic County Tournament. So guys... This is what Travis lives for. He's had a great career here at Wayne Hills. This is the big game. If he holds him here, they move on to the semis. Obviously, this is a lose and go home single elimination game. What do you expect to see from Travis here? I think Travis is going to do what Travis has done all game, just throw strikes, hit the corners, and strike out a lot of guys. Yeah, I don't see there's, if there's any reason why he can't do that. I mean, he's been doing it all game. Doing Wayne, it all year. All year. The last two years, really. I mean, he had a great year as a junior last year. 
and he's carried that into this season and just had an absolutely phenomenal season. I'll roll through his numbers once again. We did it earlier. Travis Delavopi, 3.29 ERA. Six complete games on the season and seven starts. So he goes the distance just about every time out. He has a 5-2 and two record on the year. 60 strikeouts on the year, too. That's right, 9.4 per game. Opponents hitting just 277 against them in 44 and two-thirds innings. So, like I said, just a great season for Travis. So, Avedizian and Solomon over for some words of encouragement. Avedizian, the senior, coaching on his senior teammate, Travis Elavolpi. As Wayne Hills has a bunch of seniors on this team. And leading things off, for Valley will be the eight hitter, Marcus Virgilito. 0 for 2 today, popped out to short and grounded out back to the pitcher. First pitch, off speed on the inside corner, strike one. So Della Volpe starts it off with a strike. That's exactly how he wanted to start things off. Is the 0-1 now, he's working quickly. Another pitch, the same exact one. Dowling goes to his right, feels it, throws to first, and he gets the runner. Virgilito sliding into first, punches the dirt. But that won't help things because he just grounded out for the first out of the seventh inning. Wayne Hill's two outs away from the semis right now. You can feel it, John. You can feel the intensity, both teams. He wanted that hit, sliding into first, trying to, trying to make it close. Something you don't Didn't see help. too often, but just a move of desperation right there from Virgilito, trying to get on, doing anything he can. But Della Volpe, two outs away from the win. Here's the pitch. <laughs> Strike on the outside corner. Della Volpe throwing strikes in the seventh against Luke Rigoloso, the senior. Pitching with the lead is a lot of fun. You can be extremely aggressive, throw whatever you want. Rigoloso hits it to second. Dowling's there, scoops it up, waits for Solomon to get over, makes the play for the second out. So just like that, four pitches. Della Volpe's got two outs. He's just an out away from the county semis. Well, I just have to say, Travis pitching great all game. He deserves to get this win. And uh, my score before the game, just to let you all know, was 4-2 Wayne Hill. So it's looking like that's what it's going to be. Two outs, nobody on. The last hope for Wayne Valley, the junior left fielder, Zach Rosen. Stepping up, he's 0-3, for 3, reached on an error in the fifth. Here's the pitch from Travis. Another slider in there for a strike. Six. Seven strikes now to start off the inning for Della It's Volpe. a great feeling when you have it on the mound. You got your stuff. Another off-speed pitch gets Rosen chasing. And now Wayne Valley is down to their final strike. Looks to be a change up there. Nice stuff. Della Volpe working fast. The 0-2. Swing and a pitch. He got him on a change up. game. Four to two. Great pitching performance from Travis Della Volpe. Complete game, gave up just two runs. Wayne Hill celebrates all around. Great game for them as they defeat their crosstown rivals, the Wayne Valley Indians, by a final score of four to two. Well, again, like I just said before, Travis pitched great. He got the game-winning hit, three-run home run, and Hills walks away with a victory. Travis Delavolpe with an 87 pitch complete game. Great efficiency from him as the teams shake hands now. Valley eliminated from the Passaic County Tournament. Hills will march on into the semifinals in hopes of winning a county, uh, county championship this year. We'll get in, hopefully have a post-game interview for you. So Wayne Hills with the 4-2 win. They'll move on to the semis, a game that they were supposed to win, but at some point, at one point in this game, it looked like they, their uh, run might be in jeopardy here. But... The big hit, obviously, the Travis Ellis will be three-run homer. Absolutely huge for Wayne Hills. So they won 4-2. But Joe, talk about that big inning where they scored all four runs. I mean, like I said, all four runs in the fifth inning. Just a great rally, Dow dallying with the big tying double. And then, of course, Travis with the monster hit. Well, I think the inning all started with Ryan DiDerno. Two strikes, he gets hit. And it was a big play in the game because he only had one out. And uh, Br Brian again with his big hit, RBI double, made it second and third, and Travis blew out the candle in the, s in the sixth inning. 
with a nice three run home run. Uh, as you see, Wayne Hill is huddling up. Coach Ionello going to give him the post game speech. Valley will do the same in left field. But a great game for Wayne Hills, as we said. Travis Dell will be the complete game, just what you wanted for him. I mean, you, you can just expect that for him. Like I said, six out of his seven starts have been a complete game. His stats will just improve after this one. I mean, you'd expect him to rest up now for the county semis. County, county, county semifinal next week. Which is next Saturday. The county finals will be on Memorial Day. So we'll be back with an interview. We'll take a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Wayne Hills High School where the Wayne Hills Patriots beat the Wayne Valley Indians by a score of 4-2. to two. Myself and Joe Rapp are joined by sophomore second baseman Brian Dowling who had the big RBI double to tie the game in the fifth inning. So Brian, with the bats struggling, you guys weren't doing anything against Savistano. I mean, what was your mentality going into that last at-bat? Um, I figured uh, I had to forget the first two at-bats, flew out one, struck out. And uh, as Coach I told me, I got to shorten my swing and hit something the other way. And uh, I hit it hard, and it fell in for a base hit. Now, Savistano was pitching a great game today. I mean, he shut yep. you guys down for four innings, and you guys rocked him the first time. What was he doing this time that was that was just better? I think his uh, his changeup was definitely on today. I mean, it's a little different than Curveboy. Can't really – high school hitters have a hard time recognizing it. And uh, he threw it for strikes, mixed in a good fastball. He throws pretty hard and uh, kept us off balance. And uh, he did a good job, though, today. From your first at bat to your third at bat, was his velocity slowing down? Um, you know, it wasn't that it was slowing down, it's just you got used to it. I mean, uh, it, he throws a pretty hard fastball, but you got, and for me, I had to shorten up and just poke it the other way. I mean, it seemed the same, but uh, I was more used to it and ready to uh, jump on it. I had my timing down. Yeah, it seemed like that. Once you guys got through the order for the third time, you guys really started to hit. Of course, Travis with the big home run. I mean, what can you say about him? I mean, your neighbors with him, good yeah. friends. Pitched a heck of a game today. I mean, what can you say about him? Um, Travis is a special player, and uh, I think we all noticed that one of the better players has come through our program in a while. I mean, he plays a field well. He hits well. I mean, he's got confidence in every at bat, every game that he pitches, and uh, we, we know we got a very good chance to win with him on the mound. When you heard the ball off the bat, you knew it was gone. When? when Travis. Travis hit his home run. Oh, yeah. I was in second base. I looked up. I was like, that's out. And I'm not surprised because big situations, he's come out big all year. Yeah, he really has. He's had two home runs at PCT that one yes. game. So, I mean, he just hits for power. That was his sixth home run this year. Yeah, he's a, he's a special player. So, now is he going to – I don't know who's going to pitch Tuesday. You guys play Tenafly in no, the Monday. States? No, Monday. I'm pitching, yeah. You're going to pitch in st yeah, the state yeah, tournament? Yeah, All right, so what do you know about Tenafly? How are you um, going to approach them? Uh, I know Coach I has a scouting report. I'll look at it. Um. I think I gotta dom use my fastball inside, you know, just try to jam hitters. To, but uh, that's about it. I'm just gonna throw strikes and let my fielders make some plays. Now we're not sure who you guys are gonna play in the county semis, nope. but it's definitely gonna be someone solid. You know that. Definitely. So I mean, do you, is there any reason you guys can't go all the way? I mean, you're gonna face I, good teams. Personally, I think we, I think we uh, we have a pretty good chance to. We got, we gotta play our game, and uh, we'll win. I think play our game and. Uh, Pitchers got their strikes. I think we'll probably be having Travis next week again. And then someone's going to be thrown in the semis and then probably Travis in the finals again. So we do our thing. I think we can come out on top. All right. Well, thanks, Brian. That's all the time we have for this broadcast. Once again, Wayne Hills beating Wayne Valley 4-2 to two in the county quarterfinals. For Anthony Scadillo, Joe Rapp, Matt Trainer, Sherry Van Howen, Mr. Berkowitz, Mr. Hookstreet, John Giordello, everyone that was here today, thank you for your support of the club. And that'll just about do it here from Wayne Hills with Wayne Hills beating Wayne Valley 4-2. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Thanks.